Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome back to AutoLine Daily. We're now into the month of September. Today is the 4th, and here's the news. Forget all this talk about car sales being in trouble around the world. According to Ward's Auto, automakers sold over 6.5 million vehicles worldwide in July, an increase of over 7% compared to last year. And all regions, except for Europe, recorded gains. Through the first seven months of the year, global sales hit 48 million units, an increase of 6%. But much of the gain is due to Japanese automakers recovering from last year's earthquake and tsunami, which crippled production. You know, this was probably inevitable. GM Inside News is reporting that General Motors is shutting down its hybrid program for full-size pickups and SUVs, what it called its two-mode hybrid. In the Silverado pickup, it delivered about four more miles per gallon than a base V6 with a four-speed automatic. But the base price of a Silverado hybrid was almost $40,000, or about $17,000 more than a base non-hybrid version. For the first seven months of this year, GM only sold 1,378 two-mode hybrids in the Silverado, Sierra, Escalade, Yukon, and Tahoe. No matter how you want to look at it, it has been a sales disaster. Hyundai's South Korean workers are back on the job. They narrowly approved a new contract, which brings the company's costliest strike in history to a close. The production lost came to about $1.5 billion. Two big sticking points for the union were wages and work hours, Hyundai agreed to increase average compensation by some $24,000 over the life of the contract and to end overnight shifts. Here's a fun factoid. Since the union was founded back in 1987, workers have gone on strike 21 of the last 22 years. Jaguar Land Rover is considering a new manufacturing plant in Saudi Arabia. Reuters reports the company is looking at placing the plant next to a new aluminum smelter to seemingly take advantage of using aluminum parts in its vehicles. Ratan Tata, the chairman of Tata, which owns JLR, says that in the long term, having an assembly plant with a large press shop next to an aluminum smelter and have it make aluminum body parts creates an interesting business case. First they called it stereolithography, then it was referred to as rapid prototyping, now it's mostly called 3D printing. Well, whatever you want to call it, it is the future of manufacturing. It's about using lasers to solidify plastics or to sinter metals into a product. Now some engineering students in Belgium working with an automotive supplier called Materialize have made a body for a student formula racing car using a stereo lift machine. 3D printing allows you to make any kind of design that you want on the fly. One of the greatest revelations in my career was when I saw rapid prototyping machines making parts to make other rapid prototyping machines. Not only can these things make products, they can make the factories and machinery needed to build any product in mass production. Nissan is on a roll right now. Every time you turn around, it seems to be coming out with a new model. After the break, we'll take a look at the new Sentra. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. While many of us enjoyed a relaxing holiday weekend, Nissan used its tie-in with college football to kick off coverage in Dallas, Texas for the all-new 7th generation Sentra, its second biggest selling car and an important player in the competitive compact car segment. 
Sentra is a key model in our portfolio and one of the key five launches we've got in the next 15 months. We expect it to do very well. We launched the Versa last year. We've got the Altima that just came out in May and now the Sentra positions itself really well right between those two sedans. So this car is meant to hit the heart of the compact sedan segment which is over two million annual sales and growing year over year. So it's a tremendous amount of volume. Most manufacturers want to have a strong player in this segment. We have a strong player now with this car with all the improvements that we've done. First and foremost, best in class combined fuel economy of 34 miles per gallon. Also the interior, the interior has been remarkably refined for 2013 as well as the technology that's been added to the car with an all new CVT, all new 1.8 liter engine and loads of technology in the car for consumers to use for infotainment. Uh, the key improvements to the car has been the all new 1.8 liter engine which uh, is all new in this car. The engine uh, produces 130 horsepower, 128 foot-pounds of torque, but the key things to know is that the engineers did everything they could to take both weight and friction out of the engine and transmission. We mated that engine to an all-new CVT transmission that has three drive modes, normal, eco, and sport, so consumers can choose exactly what kind of driving they'd like to do. In the process of the new, adding the new CVT, we reduced about 150 pounds of weight in the vehicle. That's by using really high strength, lightweight steel, as well as revamping the entire CVT in the car. So all in all, the powertrain is much stronger, more fuel efficient, and much lighter. The new Altima is already in dealerships. A new Pathfinder and Sentra are set to join it this fall, and Nissan still has two more new models coming next year. Anyway, that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.